So in our last video, we looked at how a special device called a switch could lessen the chance of a collision so that data could be sent easily from one device to another, and that each device had a separate MAC address or link address that uniquely identified it. Could we extend this model to the whole world, do you think? What problems can you see if billions of computers are connected together? Do I need billions of separate wires? Let's think about that. The whole internet would be clogged very quickly with data that may really only need to be in one building. I'm just sending it to the local server. Or one town. I'm communicating with my local council. Or one country. I'm getting information from a newspaper or a service like the ABC within Australia. So there's a device on your network which has the job of deciding whether a packet of data needs to go outside. Now this device is called a router, which is like a souped up switch. It looks at the sender's data packet to see whether the destination is part of the existing local area network or if it needs to go somewhere else. But how does it know? Well, there's a server on pretty much every network which has the job of giving another special number to each device which matches their MAC address. This is called a DHCP server. Now, DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Yep, it's another protocol. It dynamically sends you can use this special address as the configuration for a device on the network. Now this special number, which is called the Internet Protocol or IP address, identifies the owner and the location of the network in the world. Now that's the important thing. Now if you Google what's my IP, Google will tell you the IP address that your device shows to the outside world. And if you paste this address into easywhois.com, that'll tell you who owns this address. IP addresses need to be very carefully managed. Obviously, like mobile phone numbers, they can't be duplicated. Now, there's an organization called ICANN, I-C-A-N-N, which is the overall manager of items such as this. So you can have a look at ICANN.org if you're interested in taking that further. Now, there's another protocol called the Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP, which is used to determine the MAC address of a node if you only know its IP address. A node is a fancy word for a device on the network. So when a host on a LAN wants to learn a MAC address, Another protocol, the Address Resolution Protocol, or ARP, is used to determine the MAC address of a device if you only know its IP address. So when a host on a LAN wants to learn a MAC address, it sends out a broadcast ARP request. It goes to everyone. Hey, is anyone out there using 10.1.1.1? If there is, the host will reply, yep, I'm on this address and I'm at got this particular MAC address. The switch then knows which switch socket to send the data to if the destination address of a packet matches. This is referred to the network layer of communications as we saw earlier. I'm going to do that again.
Now another protocol Now there's another protocol which matches up the IP address and the MAC address and that's called the address resolution protocol. So it's used to determine the MAC address of a device if you only know its IP address, which is what happens a lot with an internet uh, contact. When a host on a LAN or a device on a local area network Want, when a device on a local area network wants to learn what a MAC address is, it sends out a broadcast, goes to everyone, address resolution protocol request saying something like, hey, is anyone out there using 203.0.64.100? And if there is, then that device will reply, yep, I'm 203.0.64.100 and I'm at 000A959D6816. So the switch then knows which socket on the switch to send the data to if the destination address of a packet is 203.0.64.100. So you've got a, a nice way of using a local MAC address if you need to but also a way of relating the IP address to the MAC address. All of this is referred to as the network layer of communications. As we saw earlier, the computer can use the MAC address for local communications, but also has an IP address for communications outside or inside if it really needs to. So if the destination address is in a different IP range to the local network, the router routes the packet of data to the outside world. But how does it know where to send it? Well, your school's master switch connects other areas in the school and via a firewall to the rest of the world. The rest of the world bit is usually managed by an internet service provider. In this case, it's any number that doesn't start with 203.0.64. Now remember from the first video, the firewall is a special device that checks requests both inbound and outbound to see if they're okay. It just looks up a bunch of rules. If they are to or from a site that is inappropriate or has potentially dangerous material, it rejects the request or the delivery depends on which direction it's coming from. And we'll look at this in a few minutes. Our school's router is connected via the firewall to other routers to form an internet, a network of networks. And on it goes, via a combination of overland and undersea cables, seen here, and satellite connections to connect the world together.